Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll take you through the steps of making carbon fiber tubes. So I'll be going through four techniques. This was a highly requested tutorial and I finally find the time to do it. Um, and I think I did it in a good way. So everything will be explained in detail in this video. And in the second video, I'll take you through the steps of finishing carbon fiber tubes or like any carbon fiber part that you want in four different ways as well. Near the end of the video, I'll go through some like data or like a, a table to show you the difference between all the techniques but let's get let's get started with the first one so if during this video you like this video make sure to leave a like to support me subscribe and ring that bell for future videos i also have an instagram where i like daily post updates on projects to come if you don't want to miss that make sure to follow me on there as well so for the first technique so this will be pre prick rolled tubes so uh, it's like cold pressed tubes. Uh, I'm using the x -Preg from Easy Composites, one layer of 210 square meters and one of 416 gram square meters. So this is an out of autoclave pre -preg. Easy Composites already made a video about this technique. So I, I won't put too much like time into this process, but I just wanted to try it and show it to all of you as well. So the video of Easy Composites will be listed on the top right as well if you're interested in their full video. So the start is the most difficult part. So I'm using the backing layer to avoid it to stick to the table. And then I'm using a plate to evenly add some pressure to the entire tube. So I'm rolling the carbon fiber. So this is a 0 90 degree weave. So it's a 12 weave. If you want to add some uh, biaxle or uh, 0 degree um, fibers as well, it's possible. Um, like a thing to mention is that you'll need to take count of the um, circle diameter diameter of your tube to measure out how long your different layers has to be because you want to have an like the start of the pre-break rolled and the ends uh, align as close as possible. There are some websites online to make calculations about that. Uh, for like the input of numbers, normally uh, 200 grams would be 0 0.2 millimeters in thickness per layer and the 416 would be around 0 0.4 millimeters in thickness. Everything is then wrapped in shrink wrap. So um, I did it by hand here. Later in the future of this video, you'll see some other ways to do it. Then everything goes into the oven. Uh, I follow the Easy Composites curing cycle. So it's two hours on 120 degrees and the heat shrink tape will shrink during that cure and add some pressure uh, to the tube. So after two hours, you're able to demold. Like an, an important thing to mention is that I'm using an aluminum mandrel or aluminum, uh, depends on where you live. Um, and it will expand in a different rate as the pre prick or the carbon fiber. So normally you'll hear some cracking and make it easier to remove because the aluminum will expand a bit more than the carbon fiber. So that's it for the first technique. So now we're going to the second one. I'll gradually go up in difficulty of the different processes. So this is a braided sleeve. So these are woven in plus 45 and minus 45 degrees uh, in normal use. Uh, but as you'll see, you'll be able to use different um, diameters, diameters of tubes, and that will have an influence on the alignment of the fiber. So the smaller the tube, the more they will go to 0, 90 degrees, um, the more uh, and width that you want to use them, uh, the more angle you'll get on your fibers. Um, so mostly if you buy them, they'll show you a minimum and a maximum of uh, diameter you can use them for. Um, but this is a manual of 5.4 millimeters, just to give you an idea. So I first did a test wrap. You see me use some tape because I thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. I thought it would like keep all the fibers um, nicely on one spot, but then I figured out that I'm just limiting the diameter of the tube here. 
So then I'm just applying the first layer dry onto the mandrel. So it's on the X winder. It will be used to wind some tapes later on in the video. And then I'm mixing some epoxy resin. So I'm using the EL2. So it's a laminating epoxy from Easy Composites with some fast hardener because I think I have enough time to apply it uh, on the parts before it's curing or gelling while doing this. So you'll see, you'll have some like, less friction if you don't have the resin on uh, so it's not sticking so it will move a bit so that's the most difficult thing of doing parts in braided sleeves because it will shift in alignment so it's difficult to have like the perfect plus 45 minus 45 um, degrees angle they have very expensive machines like um, making the braided sleeves onto parts directly using very complex g-codes um, but this will be about using a pre-made uh, braided sleeve onto a mandrel so as you see here it's very difficult to shift to avoid shifting of the weave so to apply it on you'll see you can add a lot of width to your tube by compressing it together and then by pulling it onto the tube you'll fit it tightly against the first layer that you had so the main goal is not to add too much mostly for beginners it's the most difficult part not to add too much resin you don't want to have like that glossy uh, epoxy shine onto your parts you just want it to have to look like pre prick um, and then by compression you'll get that high gloss so here I'm using the shrink tape again and you can see like the resin being squeezed, squeezed out of the two layers that has been added on here so to make it more easy to remove the wrapping like the the heat wrap at the end it's advised to remove all the excess resin that is coming out uh, don't be afraid to remove it because you already have enough resin onto your parts being compressed onto the tube and then you let it spin ideally you let it spin for a few hours uh, depending if the motors can handle it um, here I'm showing it to you on uh, the X winder, but obviously you could just do this on two mounts and just spin it manually or with a drill. Uh, you should be able to get some results as well. So don't be scared about the machine being used. You could also do this manually or um, like having a little attachment to make a tube spin. So after curing, so it went into the oven as well, uh, you're able to remove the heat shrink tape and then you're done with that tube so now about probably one of the most complex things to do um, would be having split molds so you have two parts um, making it possible to remove the, the, the tube uh, obviously it's impossible to do it with a single mold um, and here you see the two halves so these were molds that I had from a previous project for a customer uh, the molds are in quite bad shape especially on the edges but I just want you to show you how it's possible to make tubes in this so these are high temperature molds being made with the high temp epoxy resin and gel coats from easy composites um, and it was made on an existing tube so now we're back with some pre prick so I'll use a finishing layer of a 200 grams so this is an out of autoclave pre prick I think it's important to mention because normally they would use uh, autoclaves for the regular pre prick so this can be used without having an autoclave so the first layer is applied then I cut one edge off so on the opposite side so that means that one edge will always fit on the inside of the other half so here's the, the layup if you're trying to do it mostly these um, lines that come out so the fibers that come out will mostly be on the same side as where you're working from so here's a second layer and what i'm doing is an, i'm overlapping it just a bit more on the fibers that are coming out of the mold and a bit more on the inside of the molds where the fibers are in the mold so I'll show you later on it it will be more easy to understand in uh, in another shot but here you can see it I'm just using a bit more each layer after layer so this means that every layer 
will be fitted or compressed on the inside of the other mold uh, layer by layer to add some strength to, uh, to the part. Um, it will also help like gradually moving from one thickness to the other on the inside of the tube. So once all of this is done, uh, everything is going into the um, vacuum bag to debulk the part first. So we'll be doing a debulking. This means that we've used some breather and some perforated film just to remove all the air that might be trapped in between the layers as well as to compress all the layers nicely together. So I'm using the vacuum pump and then I'm just applying, like try to apply an even pressure on the entire parts by positioning the bag in a good way. And then we wait for a few minutes. So mostly I wait around 30 minutes or something to do a debulking, uh, especially when you don't have that many layers. And in between I start with the bagging. So we'll be using a tube on the inside and a bag on the outside to create some vacuum pressure while, while curing. So I'm lucky to have like a mold that isn't that wide. So I'm used, I'm able to use a tube bag as well for the outside. And then I apply some tacky tape on the inside of that bag. And this will hold the pressure like the vacuum uh, on the outside of the mold and the tube will be on the inside. So after debulking, we remove all the films and then we'll lift up one of the edges again uh, of each mold. So these will go on the inside of the other mold half that we've made. So I'm not going to do it here, but if you have some bad results, it might help to use some uh, film and a breather on the inside, but it's not necessary on easy tubes like this. So I like to align, like to put a marking on the inner tubes because I don't want to get them twisted on the inside without me knowing. So when you have the film, sometimes it sticks a bit together so you can blow it up by blowing onto one part of the tube and holding it closed on the other side. Um, and then it's just a matter of closing the molds with the tube. So here I did a little mistake uh, choosing the dimension of the inner tube, but I decided to let this in into this tutorial because I think other people might make the same mistake. So when buying tubes, mostly they will say, for example, it's 50 millimeters. Mostly this will be about the radius and not the diameter or this, um, like the full circle of the tube. Um, so here I'm applying everything, I'm closing the bag, I'm adding the vacuum port as well by making a little hole uh, through the outer bag and by applying vacuum here, uh, the tube on the inside will add some pressure on the, on the tube on the inside. Um, so here it's like, this is how you close them, so I have a full circle of tacky tape and then I press it on onto the tube. So by this I'm having a little hole with the tube being open to um, like normal atmosphere and then we'll remove the air uh, around the mold um, causing some pressure on the inside of that tube. So here I'm noticing that I'm having a hard time to push the bag on the inside and then I found out that the um, circle like the diameter was too small uh, because I've used the radius instead of the diameter of the, the tube right here. So I'm using a bigger one. So I just have to restart um, like the bags. So it's a bit of a bummer having to, to redo work, but never put a part in the oven that you're not fully sure of. So here I'm showing you the gap that you have. So this is at normal atmosphere. So the inside, uh, making it possible to add some pressure or like negative pressure. Uh, in theory, you cannot call it like that because it's vacuum, uh, but it will add the pressure on the inside of the tube, uh, compacting everything onto the, the inner mold side. So here's an image of the inside. On big tubes, you're able to see uh, if everything is correct. On like 90 degree bands, it will be more difficult to see. So this is mostly like a process in the, I would say like a blind operation because you don't know how the tube 
when on the inside until you demold. So mostly you will know you have a good bag on the inside if you can just pull out the bag without having too much problems. So here I'm removing the bag. So here I can know by seeing the wrinkles on the bag that it was, it was applied well. I remove all the nuts and bolts that kept the mold together. And here you can see the demolding of the um, split mold tube. So good results. Curing cycle is a bit longer. I put them five hours at 70 degrees and then two hours at 120 degrees and let everything cool down again to room temperatures. Obviously we'll have a seam and we'll see a visible cut on two parts, uh, on two halves on this tube. So this might be a downside, um, but you can remove any flashing by using the back of the tape. So now about the probably like most expensive uh, technique and means of equipment that you need. So I'll be using the X winder, it's a filament winder, and we'll be winding single toe, like a strand of carbon fiber, that went through a bath of resin onto a tube in a certain pattern. So the pattern that you're choosing uh, also will have an influence on the strength of the tube. So you can decide on different layers, which uh, alignment you want, like for example, a zero degree, which is mostly impossible on filament winders, um, will give you uh, strength on bending and compression. And then the angle that you choose will mostly add improvements on torque on uh, on the tube. Um, but this, this is more like engineering of tubes. I'll just go to the basics. A full tutorial on the X winder will follow later on my YouTube channel. So I'm using the IN2 epoxy resin. So it's an infusion resin because I want to have the viscosity as low as possible. So the winder is putting on the strands of carbon fiber uh, layer by layer uh, next to each other. So here I'm applying, I think it's a six, 65 degrees angle and just uh, wrap it around the entire tube. It takes about 10 minutes here. And then I'm removing the excess resin now and then. Because this is like a good machine, but it needs some fine tuning. Um, I asked some help uh, from Xwiner, but so far I didn't get an answer uh, from them. Um, but I'll explain everything in a future video later on. So once everything is finished, I'm just uh, turning the tube a bit more and, and I'll try to remove any excess resin uh, because it's um, quite resin rich when it comes out of this winder. So this is more of a DIY winder, like the very expensive winders to make vessels and um, high pressure uh, containers will be a bit more sophisticated obviously. But this is a nice way to make small tubes. I know some bio companies using uh, the X winder to make tubes as well as students using it to make rockets um, and like basic tubing. So the heat shrink wrap is added again. Then I let it cure at room temperature here uh, just to show you the difference. Uh, it won't make a big difference. Uh, ex ex expect on um, the strength uh, because the higher you cure your resin, the higher um, the strength will be of your epoxy resin. But over time, epoxy will cure um, to a high strength as well. Um, so if you're having trouble to remove the tubes, you can also add put it into the freezer. So this will shrink the aluminum mandrel. The carbon fiber mostly won't shrink, giving you a bit of space to remove the mandrel. So this can also be applied on bigger tubes. I did it on the cardboard. Uh, tube here. So this will all be uh, explained in the full tutorial about the X-Winder. So now a bit more like to wrap everything up. Um, the difference between the different techniques like roll wrapping, like I did some complexity. This is quite easy. Braided sleeve would be easy as well. Spit molds. I think it's a bit more complex with the inner tubes, the vacuum, um, having the mold as well. Filament minding is quite easy. Uh, but you have to do some G codes, you have to know the software. About price, roll wrapping, like three or one euro sign, depending on the oven, if you count it as equipment or not, and the filament winder as well. The split molds, I did it a bit more expensive because of the uh, molds that you'll need. The finish, AAA on the split molds, the rest will have a shrink wrap 
finish. And then you need to know the inner and outer diameters. So you have a good inner diameter on the um, tree techniques, except from the split mold that will have uh, a correct outer diameter. So for the next tutorial, make sure to um, subscribe and ring that bell if you don't want to miss it. I'll go through some ways of finishing parts. I'll go through some sanding, polishing, clear coating in all different ways. So if you don't want to miss that tutorial, make sure to subscribe. Uh, I'll also have like a special one in that tutorial. So this is a very cool effect. So I hope you like this video. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, let me know what technique you like the most and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.